All right, so the project, um, it's coming along pretty well. The basic system for it to log in and log out is working. We need to polish up a lot. We need to uh, give some user feedback uh, after several operations uh, when they try to uh, sign in with an account that doesn't exist we need to tell the user. Right now we just have output to the console. If they try to log in uh, with a password that doesn't match, we need to give them feedback. Right now we only have console output, we need to give visual user feedback. We also need to set up uh, when they're trying to create the account um, to make it a little bit easier. As soon as you create the account, give them the option to take them to the login screen take them to the login screen directly to log in since, since they've created the account. Uh, so we'll open both the, the HTML and the JS files in Notepad. Go ahead and open index.html in my.js JavaScript file. Okay, so what we'll do is first we'll work with the sign up mechanism in the index. HTML file in PG sign up. So at about line 26 is where PG sign up starts. What we can do here is deal with the options or the results that is of the person trying to join or create an account and giving the feedback that the passwords don't match. That's the big idea here. That's a point of failure that could happen that a person is trying to create the account and, uh, whoops, their passwords don't match. So we'll uh, set up that system to let them know. Here's where we're going to have pop-ups. Um, basic pop-ups that will appear on screen. And there could also be the possibility that the account already exists. They're trying to create a new account with that email, but they forgot that they already did, so it'll give some feedback that you've already created the account. Well, jQuery Mobile gives us a way to uh, create pop-ups that are sort of tied to a specific screen. We saw with our options, PG options, that one's a dialog box. It's a much more larger, complete screen of content. We want some basic pop-ups that have some basic uh, info or feedback. And the jQuery document, jQuery mobile documentation tells us if we're going to create any of these pop-ups that are related to a screen, we need to create the code in that screen, in that section. So before the end of article, give yourself a new line before the end of article, line, 20, line 37, and we're going to create some divs div div division uh, this divides this content from the other content and um, this is what this is uh, the message this is the message that will pop up so first we'll say something like passwords don't match that's the message that will appear to the person they're trying to create an account your passwords don't match give them a pop-up that says your passwords don't match. In order for this to actually look like something like a real pop-up and such, we need a few things, a few jQuery mobile things. We need a data role. This one's a new one. Data role. Pop-up. One word. Lowercase. Data role pop-up. We also need an attribute of a class. So when we had 
the article that had a class to display content, class UI content, for that article. We need something similar here because without any styling, this div will look very generic, it'll look transparent, it'll look weird. So we'll use the same UI-content. UI-content is a CSS rule built into jQuery mobile that makes the element look nice. It uh, uh, sets the background color properly, margins and padding and all of that. And then we need an ID so that we can actually uh, pop it up, actually view it at the right time. So a unique identifier. Here's where we can do something such as pop um, error. That reminds me we need to turn on our auto auto uh, auto complete. I'll remind you how to do that in a moment. So pop error sign up mismatch this is a pop up, which is going to be an error in the sign up screen. It's a mismatch password mismatch. Uh, yeah, password mismatch. So this is the syntax for a pop-up. We can make a note. jQuery mobile syntax for making a basic pop-up. It's a div, it's a generic container, it's got a data role of pop-up. It's got a class so that it doesn't look transparent and weird. And it's got an ID so that we can call it up as necessary in the code. Whatever message we want to display then is between the div tags. Now I think it is going to be useful to use that uh, autocomplete. So let me remind you where autocomplete is at in Notepad. You can go up to Settings, <coughs> Preferences, in the left categories we have autocompletion and I would turn on all of them basically. Enable autocompletion on each input, function parameter hint, open and close all of these types of brackets and quotes and I didn't turn on this one last time, but now that I look at it, I think this one's useful to HTML tags. So if you want it to automatically also close your HTML or XML tags, they will close. Uh, if you want to make your own set of pairs here, every time you do a back tick, for example, or every time, I don't know, you do an exclamation point, you can have it open and close the exclamation point for some reason. You can create your own matched pairs. So I will turn all of those on. Close that, and now as we type, it'll help us. Because I also want to create another div for another possible message. We have the message, if your passwords don't match, I want to make another message. Uh, account already exists. And, and that account already existing is going to be based on the email created. So with autocomplete on, we can create another div. Look at that, autocomplete. And then inside of that, we can say account already exists. Data role, exactly the same as before. Data role, pop-up, same class, different ID, Do pop, error, sign up, exists. So we have these two pop-ups that we're creating in the occasion or on the event that their passwords are mismatched, or we've already got that email account stored. They're trying to create an account that already exists. So 
So the way this will work is we've got this jQuery stuff, jQuery mobile stuff in the HTML file. Then we'll jump over to the JavaScript file to actually call that stuff up as necessary. Alright, so once you've got that HTML, you can save it. Uh, let's go over to our JavaScript file. Here's a shortcut. If you uh, are working with different files in Notepad, you can jump between the different files uh, by doing Control tab on Windows, you may know that Alt-Tab switches you between different windows in Windows, Alt-Tab, but in many other apps, a Control-Tab in Windows will let you switch between open windows in the app. So right here I get a little list. I'm on this file, I want to jump to that file. If I had different files open, I can jump through them, Control-Tab. And I kind of I think it jumps over in a in a weird uh, order. It doesn't quite jump between uh, the order that they're up there sometimes. So another way to do it uh, is control page up, control page down. That one goes up in in the sequence that the tabs are up there. I think I've noticed that when you've got different windows open, they jump around when you do control tab in a different in an odd way sometimes. I usually do control page up, page down. Or use the the classic method of click on it with the mouse. Let's go find our function where we sign up. Right over here, function sign up, line 16. We need to deal with the possibility of the passwords are mismatched. So help me out here. What line do we go to find where it checks about a mismatched password? Approximately what line number? Uh, around 32. 31, 32. Let's see. Yep, so around line 31, line 32 or so, depending on comments and such. If else statement, line 31 ish, 32 ish, right here. If else, and we're checking if they're not equal to each other, the password and the confirmed password. So we need to work with that block there. We have the console output that says passwords don't match, but that's only for the developer. We need to then make those pop-ups appear to the user, those pop-ups that we created. New line 34 after that console output. So according to the jQuery documentation, jQuery mobile documentation, we have to sort of initialize that div so that it can behave like a pop-up. Once we initialize it, then we can actually use it or call it or make it pop up. So we have to uh, reference the, uh, the ID. Now, we could do it a couple of ways. There's the ID of that particular item right there. Uh, we could, as we've been doing, we could uh, create these global variables that we can use over and over, or we can call that ID directly. I'll show you both, and then I'll show you which I prefer. The fast way is uh, here with the jQuery selector, we select the item. We're saying there is a div, or there is an ID somewhere. Um, dot pop-up uh, method. Let's initialize that div so that it behaves like a pop-up. Note, initialize an element, usually a div to behave like a pop-up.
The second step is then to actually say, okay, it's initialized, pop up. It's the exact same line, so I'll just copy and paste, with a couple of arguments, a couple of items in the parentheses. In quotes, open. And then optional options next about uh, the position of the pop-up, where on the screen it appears, the animation of the pop-up, and that sort of thing. So we've, saw, we've seen a version of this before, where we're passing in several options as arguments in, uh, in JSON format in, in curly brackets. So here we'll see where, where are we positioning that pop-up on screen, and how are we uh, animating it. So in quotes here, we will say position to capital T outside of the quotes uh, colon and then in another pair of quotes open over on the jQuery do documentation we have like four possibilities of where to position built-in possibilities of where we can position any pop-up it can be in the center of the screen it could be it could open uh, on the particular item that we clicked on on top of it uh, and we can position in any in any x and y coordinates where are we positioning this to after that quote comma and then here we can add a transition so that's transition outside of the quote colon <coughs> the name of the animation, like flip. If we don't s set that, we get the default transition. What's the default transition in jQuery Mobile? Fade. Very simple fade. So this first line here initializes it. The second one actually opens it with options. first, and this is required, first, initialize, second, the real uh, method that opens it with uh, options in uh, curly brackets. Now, what I was saying a little bit earlier about the two, the two possibilities. We've been working up here where we created those variables, line 23, 25. We created these jQuery elements based on the HTML nodes. We can access HTML nodes directly this way. We've got up there the jQuery selector, the dollar parentheses, we're selecting the object and then we're storing it, so to speak, in the jQuery variable for then for us to quickly then use it as a shorthand elsewhere. We are able to access an element in HTML or reference an element directly like this. The difference between those two is that this is more efficient because we've already defined an element that's in the memory. Doing it this way is less efficient because we have to <coughs> access that element every single time we, we process the code up to that point. So this is one way to do it, one quick way. The other way takes a little bit more effort where we have to define the variable to what it's being set to, and then we can use the variable. So I would prefer the way that we've been doing it up here. I just wanted to show you these two ways because sometimes uh, this this uh, method, this way to do it, is useful. We can test this one, and then uh, I'll rewrite the code in a in a moment. But uh, it should work at least. So let's try to test this out. Let's run this. Uh, go to create an account. Uh, mistype your password, and hopefully you get a little pop up that says uh, password mismatch. 
remember to run <coughs> run the HTML file, not the JavaScript file. You want to open up your developer's console right away. I'll go to sign up. So I'm going to do a at a.com, password abc, and then password xyz. Passwords don't match. So you get a pop up that appears, that opens up in the middle of the screen. There's a little animation of flip, uh, flips into view, that pops up whatever you wrote in the div in the HTML file. So this is what I was saying about that transition. So uh, we have the other ones of uh, slide up, for example. If you just want to play with different transitions there to see whatever you like. C, X, Y, Z, that slides up into view. Would it be possible to share the same page? Are they relative to each other? They're sort of chained, so the last one that is called is the last one that appears, and the other ones are still in memory, which might cause weirdness. So we have a way to close, uh, to close one before opening another, and we will need to do that at a later point. So normally you, you reserve the space, a div, or something, and you put the messages in that div, fill them out if they're multiple messages, then five messages. They all use the same div. Yeah, uh, that's a very common way. This way, because we're using this dynamic pop-up that appears on top of elements, um, could have that, that issue, yeah. So we get a result there, and when we click outside, it, do you notice the, the animation then goes the opposite way? This slid up, when you click outside of it, slides back down, opposite. So whichever transition you like, uh, I, didn't, I, I haven't tried this one, flow. Uh, actually, I'm, not, I'm curious how that one would work since flow usually changes the whole screen. Oh, that's interesting. So flow does that. It's kind of a kind of a slide from the right. It's very similar to a slide, but it's flow, and it's slightly faster, and it's slightly different. I'm going to keep it on flip. You can choose whichever you like. And I'm going to rewrite this code like I said. Yes? No, I'm just going to figure out, is that a, how did you know, zoom back in. So is that a bracket in the parentheses? Uh, this one here? Yeah, and what's up the back? It is a closing parenthesis. That one closes the pop-up method. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I will I will rewrite the code here, uh, make it a little more efficient. Instead of calling the object here, the element directly, I'm going to create a placeholder for it, like I've done before, and reuse it here. So. If you back up to where you've got your group of variables that you've created before, I'm going to add a new one. So you need to change that semicolon to a comma because we're adding a new item. L, <coughs> uh, pop, error, sign up, mismatch, is equal to the jQuery selector, the one down there, pop, error, sign up, mismatch. And we know we're going to use something very similar for the other kind of error we get, so we might as well write it, comma, next line, L pop error sign up uh, exists. It exists. And that's set to quotes pound pop error. Sign up exists. We can use that one in a moment. Don't forget to end that one with a semicolon, and it's cutting off on the edge here. But remember, all of this, all of these have commas, 
until the final uh, declaration here, the final statement, uh, semicolon, because we're, we're piggybacking on that first var. So that means we need to change this. It's no longer pointing to the sort of the raw selector. It should be point. It should be attached to the member operator is attached to the shorthand. It's not that short, but it's more efficient. So that one is dollar l pop error mismatch for both of them. So both should uh, give you the same result. One has been consistent. The second way, how I rewrote the code, has been consistent with the way we've been doing it. And technically more efficient. But the other way uh, was another way to do it. Which sometimes might be necessary. So we need to do something very similar to that, dealing with a, an account that already exists. All right, so we have this first if-else statement with check, which checks uh, if the passwords match. We have a second if-else statement in this uh, else block, which then checks uh, if that uh, account already exists. So scrolling down a little bit further, in the else block, we have another if block, and then we have a lonely console output right there on line 54 or so. Uh, if the... Um, if the account doesn't exist, let's create one, or else it does exist. We have that simple output there uh, for the console. We need to do then uh, pretty much exactly what we did above, setting up the pop-up method, and then actually opening the pop-up. Uh, so next line there, $L pop error sign up exists dot pop-up method to initialize exact same thing, but then this time with arguments of open and then optional options. Now I'll do the same ones. Uh, actually, slightly different. We'll try a little different here. Uh, position to window, just to see a difference. We have position to open, position to window, and X, Y, and Z or X, Y coordinates. So, quotes position two colon window and then a transition. flip. You can test this one by fully creating an account with an email and passwords that match. You can then refresh and then try to create another account. Try to create an account with the exact same email. You can use a different password, it doesn't matter, or the same password. Try to create the same account with the same email and then that should trigger this pop-up that the account already the account already exists.
Uh, let me check mine. Um, I'm going to refresh. We'll create a at a <coughs> dot com, password a a a a a a join. We haven't done anything about feedback that you successfully joined. It's still in the console. But I created the account AAA. I'll go back and refresh it. There's already the AAA account. If I go to sign up and I try to sign up with AAA, uh, even if I put in a different password, it's tied to the uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have done that because then we'll get the passwords on match. Um, but uh, okay, one, two, three. Uh, so it's tied to, to the email, not the uh, not the password. What's checking the uh, password matching is one thing, and what's checking if that email exists is another. So same password, one, two, three. Account already exists. Um, through this if else, it checked that a at a dot com has been saved inside of the local storage. So therefore, account already exists. Let's pause right there. So you should get both of those pop-ups working. And then we'll go on with the other pop-ups. Any, anyone need a little help on, on those? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
All right, so uh, if this worked, we've got some pop-ups that are happening. These pop-ups are giving some feedback to the user that you've got some errors. We'll do something similar to this if they successfully logged in. If they successfully logged in, I want to send them quickly to the screen to log in. They were able to create the account, let's log in. Right now, the way that works is, you know, I create the account B at B, 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 and there's no feedback to the user. I want at that moment a pop-up that's a little more complex than the one we just saw that then says, okay, welcome, please log in. Now that there's an account and a password, now please log in. Can you take it to the login page? Yes we can do it a couple of ways. One is directly as soon as they click join to take them to the login screen. The problem with that might be is some people don't realize what just happened. Suddenly I was trying to create the account. Where am I now to log in? And yeah, a lot of people will get it. It worked. I want to log in. It might be better for user experience to let them know first. You've created the account. Now proceed to log in. But we will see uh, with the code here, we can accomplish either or. Um, ultimately, uh, we, we're going to come back to this part right, uh, right here. Users say, we'll come back to the JavaScript in a moment. But it would be here. If we reference our code elsewhere, where we had the uh, page container, that code right there is what lets you change from screen to screen. If we change that, if we copy that and put it, back on the line that I was at, that would take us directly to the login page. But first, we're uh, going to put in a, uh, a little bit of user friendliness here to tell them, you've created an account, now let's log in. That means I want to create a, a pop-up um, in this very similar way here. I want to create a pop-up. So first we'll go back to the HTML uh, to create a new uh, a new div. It'll be a little bit different than the one we did before because it'll display a little bit more info and do a little bit more. These pop-ups at the moment are, are basically only giving you um, simple feedback. Simple feedback. I want the message and I want the ability to click continue or OK or whatever and proceed. Back to the HTML still within the same area before the end of the article in PG signup. This is more data that's related to PG signup, so we continue it in the article of PG signup. Next line. This is also a div. I'm going to break this one into multiple lines for readability. And there's going to be more stuff in the div. A plain old message like this, I kept it in one line just for efficiency. It's one line, it's there. Here will be multiple lines of content, so I like to break it into multiple lines. But it's still going to have the same data role of pop-up. It's going to... Also, then have a data dialog of true. We saw that one 
when we created the um, the options screen, that one that that popped up in a different kind of way. Here's a new one: data dash dismissible false. The default is true. If you notice, when you get that pop-up, the mismatch or the existence, you can click anywhere outside of the pop-up and it dismisses it. It goes away. You have this option of doing data dismissible false where it will not go away if you click outside of it. And sometimes you want to do this to focus people's attention. Sometimes people, we're, we're so used to pop-ups and annoying stuff that we just click elsewhere, close, click somewhere to close it, get it out of my way. Well, with the data dismissal false, we can kind of focus the user to, hey, pay attention to this pop-up, you know, click on this pop-up to continue, to hopefully for them to read what the pop-up is to do something with the pop-up. It's optional, but it's useful if you want to do that. And it needs an ID so we can reference it. ID, pop success sign up. We had these errors. And here's one that's a success. It doesn't need the class if you write content. No, because we're gonna uh, actually put a little header in this and the main content, which will then eventually use the class of UI content. JQM syntax for making a more complex pop-up. We'll compare and contrast this one. We, you might want one kind for some purposes and this kind for another purpose because this one's more complex. This one we can put in a header. It's almost kind of going to be like a larger uh, actual screen, a, a data roll of page, but still behaving like a pop-up. Since it's a header, it needs a data roll of header. Some sort of header at the top there, h1. Here we can say success. That'll be the title of the header that appears. And then the main content, article. Here's where we've got the usual role of main and the class of UI content. So basically, wherever we attach UI content makes it look nice. Short answer. So the article, I want the article to look nice. This plain old div. That's where we wanted it to look nice. So that's where we attached it. But here it's a more of a complex pop-up, and it's got a header and some content there. Create a paragraph in here. Say thank you. Ready to log in. And this will be a plain old kind of button. Oh, that's redundant. Ready to go. And then we'll say log in. This will be a button like we've been seeing before with with uh, jQuery mobile. That's a plain old A tag, which will be a plain old link, so we need to upgrade it. Data roll button. And overriding the default transition for consistency flip. And this is ultimately then to take us to the login screen. What's the idea of the login screen? PG login. PG login.
So all of this still is somewhat like a pop-up. It has a, a lot more content and design. It will still pop up at the moment that it's a, that a user successfully creates the account, so it's still like that kind of pop-up. Then it's going to behave more like a dialog box that we've seen before with data dialog true. It's not dismissible. You can't click outside of it. You can only click that button to dismiss. So that way it'll avoid people not paying attention and clicking elsewhere. What did I dismiss? What did I what did I close? It has an ID so we can call it. It has a header for a little style. That's optional. We can compare what it looks like without it if you'd like. It doesn't really need that header, but for design-wise, I want to put that there. The important part is the article, what's actually being shown in the dialog box. And then the way the mechanism works to take you to the login is a plain old data. And yeah, that's a little bit more work to code and for the user, but I think for you, for the whole concept of user experience, I think it's better so that people just don't blow through the process and don't pay attention. Pay attention. You just created an account. You're ready to log in. Click to log in. This, of course, as I said, you can skip all of this by simply referring to the page content code and go directly to the login, and that'll work fine if you'd like that in your app. So let's check it out. Uh, if you haven't figured this out, when you're uh, working with more than one file at once, you may have to save more than one file. If I do control S right here, this only saved my currently open file. I still have the JavaScript file to, to save. See how it's red. If you haven't figured this out, you have a button right there, save all, all open files, or a shortcut. Uh, control shift s so when you're dealing with more than one open file at a time it might uh, be better to do control shift s to save them all at once go ahead and test it create a brand new account you get a pop-up this pop-up and then follow it and log in We don't need the sounds of nature bothering us. We're programming. <laughs> so let's check that out. And I do sign up, create a brand new account. Oops. Oh, yes, the JavaScript portion of it. <laughs> Okay. Yes, so we did the HTML portion of it. We need the JavaScript portion of it so that this pops up. And basically, it's the same code we were doing previously to the basic pop up. We need to create the variable that references pop success sign up. Then that element, we do the dot pop up and then the dot pop up open. Back to the JavaScript. Uh, back to the top where we've got our block of global variables, new variable, so change line 27 to a comma, dollar $l pop success, sign up. Be careful about your spelling. I make this mistake all the time too. Was it a capital U, lowercase u? Just remember what you did or go back and check equals jQuery selector quotes pound sign don't forget the pound sign because we're uh, dealing with that ID and then semicolon end of statement end of line and then now we can use the jQuery element the variable there to reference that and we do the rest we just have to find the right spot to put it in. Uh, it's going to be 
in pass the first if else, which checks password match. Inside of the else, we've got another if else. There it is, checking if uh, the account exists or not. And we had some output here, line 52 or so in the console, user saved. Well, now we wanted to have that pop up. So the L pop up success, initialize it, dot pop up. Next, actually open it. Um, this time, just I won't even put options. You can put options if you want to play with window position or the other positions or the animation. Um, I'll, I'll see what it looks like like this. And then I'll probably go back and put the transition to be consistent. Probably the flip transition again. pop-up, no transition, so it just suddenly appears. It's a little clunky, so maybe I will put the flip transition or something. Thank you, ready to go. Success. Click login. Success. Uh, login screen to log in successfully. So I will go back in and put those options. Just transition. Transition, colon, flip without any transition. It just seems to have appeared. I guess fade doesn't... I guess fade isn't the, the default for a pop-up. So it kind of suddenly appeared. Didn't quite like it. Actually, here's another one we could do, maybe. Uh, pop. A pop-up animation for a pop-up will sort of burst into view. into view. Thank you, ready to go. Log in. And then I'll log in with the account I just created, h at h.com, password h. That assumes I log in with my proper password. We need to deal with that. Wrong password. We'll, uh, We'll do that one right after the break, but it's going to be very similar to all of this that we set up here. We need a div. We need a div. We need the variable for it. We need the instantiation of the pop-up and all of that. So we'll do it right after the break. But um, if it worked for you up to this point, very good. If not, we'll take our break. It's 6, uh, 57. We'll be back at 7.07, 10 minutes.